we have the chanting during the meal. This is a tradition that was established by John Fun. He noticed that people would come to the monastery, present food to the monks, and then while the monks were having their meal, they'd sit around and chat. He said it would be better if they used their powers of speech to praise the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, and to think about think about the Dharma, think about why we're meditating, why we're practicing. Someone once came here and said, well, why do, why do we have to entertain the monks with our chanting in the morning while they eat? And let me tell you, it's not entertainment. <laughs> It's good for everybody involved. <laughs> we get to hear the Dhamma. You get to chant the Dhamma and think about it. It helps keep, keep people's minds on why we're here, what we're doing as we practice. We think about the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. There are examples for how people find true happiness, a happiness that's not harmful to anybody, and how we should take their example as we look for our happiness. Because too many people in the world are really irresponsible about how they go for happiness. They just grab whatever pleasures they want, whatever they can get their hands on. And what kind of long-term consequences is going to have for them or for the people around them, they don't really care. There's a lot of that in the world. And we've seen where that leads. So we don't want that in our lives. And we see with the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha that there is another example. There is a true happiness that we can find by being skillful, by being harmless. So we're going to keep that goal in mind. We're going to keep that principle in mind that we're going to be responsible as we look for happiness. Then we have the reflections on the body, reflections on how the world is swept away. Again, to remind ourselves, if you're looking to the body, looking to the world outside for your happiness, you're looking in the wrong place. Now you use your position in the world, or you use the fact that you've got a body to practice. Use these things as tools for the sake of the mind. And then we end with the four Brahma Viharas, extending goodwill to all beings, including ourselves. Goodwill. Compassion, empathetic joy. These are all part of a set. Goodwill is the desire for happiness. Compassion is what you, what you feel when you have goodwill, when, when you see people who are not happy, who are suffering, or doing the causes that will lead to suffering. Empathetic joy is when you see people who already are happy or are doing things that will lead to happiness. And then there's equanimity. That's a little bit of an outlier, but it's necessary. Because you realize, simply because you wish happiness for all beings doesn't mean it's going to happen. After all, beings are happy or unhappy based on their choices. And they're perfectly free to choose all kinds of things. And sometimes the results of those actions come and there's nothing much you can do about them. So the thought of equanimity is to focus you back on where you can make a difference. As the passage says, all beings are the owners of their actions. Well, what are your actions? What are your actions today going to be? Think about that. And if you can see that they're in line with the example set by the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, then you're on the right track. So as you chant, think about it. Don't just parrot the words. Think about why those passages were chosen and make the most of them. That way, even though there's no entertainment value, at the very least, there's something of real value as you keep yourself rightly directed. That, the Buddha said, is a blessing. <laughs>